see that. What we have here is a layer of ash. And that as I clean it off, you got a nice black paint underneath. Hey guys, today I'm out in the San Pedro Valley firing Salado polychrome replicas. So I'll show you this fire as it goes along. Right now I just barely got started. And, uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about how Salado polychrome was probably fired in the 1300s. What we know from archaeological evidence, which is very little actually. And uh, we'll walk around some sites, some areas where Salado polychrome was actually being produced in the 1300s. And talk about how maybe we can find some evidence of how it was fired. You can see the pot in there pretty good. Uh, looks well oxidized at this point. We're just going to let it oxidize a little bit more and then we'll get it out of there. It looks pretty good. Uh, there's probably some darker areas near the rim and at the top that we'll let kind of oxidize a little more and hopefully not burn out the paint. Okay, here's the fire. You can see I pulled off some of the excess wood and it's burning down there. See where the rocks are? That was where the pot was setting. Here's the two pots I was firing. This is that little pot, this little bowl I made uh, from the clay I collected up in Pima. You can tell it's clinky, fire good. Nice brown color. And here's my Gila polychrome. Probably could have oxidized a little more on the inside, but I think we're gonna have a good black on the outside, which is more important than oxidizing that red well. And it's again clinky. So uh, I think we did pretty well. And that was just the first firing. I still have one more. Uh, the seed jar that is over here. You can see that. I'm going to put that back in the same spot where the first one was fired. I've still got some more firewood here. So that's the plan and hopefully do it again and have two successful Salado polychromes. Okay, here's my second firing. Going well. It caught on a lot faster, of course, because it had a lot more hot coals under it from the first firing. And here's, uh, here's those pots from the first firing right there. You can see my wood pile is just about empty. The dog's enjoying the time out here. And we'll be done here in just a little bit. All right, guys, here's my pottery from the first firing. I think it came out really good. I haven't wiped the ash off the organic paint, so that'll be blacker when that ash is wiped off. As you can see now, it's kind of a, looks bluish gray on almost a yellowish color, but once I clean that up, it'll be uh, black on white real good, I think. And then my second firing over here, and uh, I'm just about to take that pot out of there, so I'll let you see what that looks like. All right, here it is. We can see there's some dark areas on it uh, where it didn't oxidize quite well enough in here, over here. But for the most part, I think, I think we oxidized pretty well, and I think we're gonna have some pretty decent black on there. So I think that was very successful. And there's the, uh, the previous firing. And that brings us to the question of how did people fire pottery in the ancient southwest? In the Four Corners area, they used trench kilns. There have been hundreds, probably thousands of these found up there. But how was pottery fired in the southern southwest? No one really knows. There's only been one definite example of prehistoric kilns ever excavated by archaeologists. And those were at Snake Town that were excavated by Howry in 1964. And these were shallow pits. That's a good idea for how the Holcom fired pottery, but that still doesn't help us with other cultures in the Southern Southwest. Cultures like the Membris or the Salado. In those places, there have been no kilns at all found anywhere. To me, the fact that no kilns have been found implies that they were using surface firings, that they were firing right on the surface of the ground, and so there's very little to be found archeologically. At the same time that Salado polychrome was being manufactured here in the Southern Southwest, Hopis were doing surface firings up in their area. And if we look up there, we can find lots of evidence of where they were firing pottery. These massive mounds of ash and char and oxidized stone and bits of sherd can be found all along Antelope Mesa where this yellowware pottery was being manufactured for trade. So this area was similar to the Salado area in that large amounts of pottery were being made for trade and they were making it there for generations. So it might be similar to what we should be looking for here in the Salado area. 
I'm out in the middle of the San Pedro Valley uh, near the sites of uh, Reeve Ruin and Davis Ranch Ruin. So these were, petrography tells us that these were places where a great deal of Salada polychrome was being manufactured back in the 1300s. If you don't know what petrography is, I'll put a link to it down in the doobly-doo. We know that a lot of the Salada polychromes that were being used at the big platform mound sites further down this valley and even being traded across the mountains into the Tucson Valley or over in the Sulphur Springs Valley. So it was being made right in this area, a lot of it. A lot of it more than they were using here because it was being made for export, for trade. So this would be a good place to start looking for those Salado uh, firing places, those Salado um, um, firing kilns, if you will. Uh, so I'm gonna look around here and see if I can find any evidence of that. Now, remember what a kiln looks like. Look at some examples of some previous firing kilns that I've done. Uh, and this will give you an idea of what to look for. Uh, we've got uh, oxidized stones. We've got some charcoal. We've got some broken sherds. So it's not a lot. And if it's on the surface of the ground, the way I'm doing it, then uh, it can get washed away uh, easily. It can get, those stones can get scattered. Um, but remember, just like those places in Hopi where they were making those trade wares for generations. Uh, if you make it for many, many years, for a, over a course of generations, you get quite an accumulation of debris from those firing piles, just like they did in Hopi. So we're hoping that in these areas, there's, there's enough evidence because they were making it here for maybe 150 years, uh, that, that there's still some signs of it. A lot of the land around here has been leveled and cleared for farming. So any evidence there might have been of firing in those areas is gone now, destroyed by uh, the farming activity. The problem with a lot of these Salado sites is areas that were appealing to the Salado in the 1300s were appealing often because they were good farming areas. And those same areas were appealing to Anglo and Hispanic farmers in the 19th century. And so we find a lot of this land has been either leveled or had towns built on top of it. Uh, if they were firing along the banks of the San Pedro River, a lot of those river banks have been scoured by floods that they had in the early 20th century. This cleared farmland behind me, there may have been evidence of firing that isn't there anymore. Uh, there is some areas that are suitable to look uh, on the margins, but as you can see, it's a very small piece of land uh, between the rocks and the farmland available to look. I have to assume that these people were carrying the pottery to the fuel and not the fuel to the pottery. That is, they were not firing in their villages. They were firing out where there were trees and where there was abundant firewood because the pile of firewood required to fire pottery is larger than the pot itself. So it's easier to carry the, the greenware pottery to the firewood uh, instead of the other way around which means they were probably firing down here along the floodplain of the river or near the river itself or any of these little uh, streams that flow off of these hills where there would have been uh, trees and firewood. Here's a clue for you. Oxidized rock. Not necessarily from a pottery firing. Could be oxidized from a campfire, a cooking fire. But remember this, campfires and cooking fires didn't need to be as hot as a pottery firing. Campfires aren't always hot enough to oxidize rock. That rock is well oxidized. That's a good clue that we're onto something right in this area. The story I'm finding over and over again is that Salado Polychrome Production Centers have largely, the agricultural areas have been cleared for agriculture today. And so, although the ruins might still exist, in this case, because they were up on a bluff away from agricultural areas, the places where the pottery was likely fired, down near the water, where the trees grew, was likely all been destroyed. Uh, Safford Valley, generally the whole valley has been leveled at this point for agriculture. 
the Cliff Valley, much of that the same way. Tonto Basin, uh, you've got Roosevelt Lake, which has flooded all of those low agricultural areas. Uh, here in the San Pedro Valley, near Reeve and Davis Ranch, uh, I'm finding the same thing. Most of the areas close to where the trees would have grown, where they would have likely done their firing, have all been leveled or scoured by floods. I'm not sure where else I can look. Uh, there's, I guess, some Salado Polychrome was being produced at Los Muertos in the Phoenix area. You know, that's all neighborhoods and shopping malls at this point. Uh, I think the Crescent Ruin in the Aravipa Valley might be the best bet for uh, areas near the creek where the water was, where the trees are, that is undisturbed. Uh, if you know of a better one, let me know. Uh, I, I'm not sure there's another option here. Uh, that one oxidized stone was all I found out here today, uh, which is a clue, uh, but certainly doesn't tell me much about how the pottery was being fired. Uh, so Crescent Ruin in the Aravipa Valley uh, is my next target. And if I can't find it there, um, you know, I might do some more searching uh, in the Cliff Valley um, because it's, it's less destroyed than some other areas. So uh, that's where I'm at. You can see that what we have here is a layer of ash. And that as I clean it off, you got a nice black paint underneath. I don't know if you can see that the lighting out here is really bad right now. So even though it looks like it's a light gray or almost white colored paint, it's ash that wipes right off. And we'll see the same thing on this one here. We've got, uh, got that white ashy color and then underneath we've got a decent black paint. Can you see that? If you like this video, give me a thumbs up so you know you liked it. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button so you know when my next video comes out. If you want to learn more about how prehistoric pottery was fired or how I fire my pottery replicas, check out this video over here which will go more in depth on that subject. So thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.